Hi there Toyota owners. Today in your 2011 Toyota RAV4, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kit ETBC7 here from eTrailer. Kit ETBC7's main purpose is to take a four pole wiring that's functioning on your vehicle and transferring that into a seven way in addition to a four pole. You're going to get the necessary wiring that you need for pretty much all the circuits. Um, with the exception of your reverse light circuit, there is a tap there, but you don't get the wiring that's included. That's an optional circuit that you don't have to attach. But if you're looking to get a brake controller installed, why don't you follow along with us on this journey and we'll show you how to do so and try to go into detail on the wiring and how they all function together to make that controller operate. So you've got your vehicle here and you've got a hitch on it and maybe you've been using it for accessories and stuff like that, but you've now purchased a trailer and you're wanting to do some hauling with it. Uh, so there's some things you need to think about with that. Oftentimes to, to stay DOT compliant, you're gonna need proper lighting on your vehicle and you can get four poles here at eTrailer that give you all of your necessary lighting signals. But your trailer may need more than that or may have a different style of connector. And there's a couple of different style of connectors out there. The most common are the four pole that we see here and the seven pole that we see here. Your ETBC7 kit is going to take a, an existing four pole and it can turn it into a functioning seven way. Now, if you just need lights on your trailer, a four pole is probably going to be all you need. But if you have a bit of a larger trailer that has a battery on it, you'll want to upgrade so you can charge that battery while you're driving down the road. Um, at home, I use, I don't have a battery on my trailer, but I use the charge line circuit to power the jack on my trailer. Uh, so that it was a good reason for me to upgrade from a four to the seven here just to get my jack working. But another thing that you also get uh, by upgrading to a seven way is the ability to use trailer brakes. And a lot of your larger trailers out there do have trailer brakes and even some of the smaller ones, some of your smaller pop-up campers, which is something this guy here could potentially be pulling. Uh, some of those do have trailer brakes as well. And if you have trailer brakes, you'll know right away um, if it's even gonna be possible based on this connector. A seven way is gonna have that functionality, but a four way isn't. So that's one of the first things you can do to determine, hey, do I even need this seven way connector? We'll take a look at your trailers, see what you got on there, what you're planning on doing with it. So we're gonna go ahead and head out to a trailer real quick before we get this installed, just so you can see what the brakes would look like underneath. So that way, if you're unsure at home, maybe you got a trailer that's got a seven way connector, but you don't know whether or not you need a brake controller or not to operate the brakes. So we're just gonna head out there real quick just so you can crawl underneath, see the same things that we're seeing so you can uh, be able to identify that for yourself. So here outside, we've got two different trailers. This one here has trailer brakes. It has a seven way connector here on the front. So that's one of the first things we look at it. We go, hey, it might have brakes. It's got this connector. We're gonna crawl underneath in a minute here so you can see that. But I just wanted to show you this one as well. This one only has a four way connector. So we know it doesn't have brakes, but we're gonna crawl under this one too. So you can see what it looks like underneath when it doesn't have brakes versus this one that does. So on this trailer, we can actually see the drum from the outside. We're gonna crawl underneath too so you can see it because you may not have a pattern where you can look through a hole to see, but we can actually see the drum that's located here. If it didn't have a drum, you would just have your hub here which is much smaller and you really wouldn't be able to see that we're going to head around the back side now so we can give that get a bit more definitive for sure this has brakes so we've crawled underneath here and one of the first things you want to look for is wiring we've got wires here that go into the back side of our backing plate here and that's for our electric brakes to operate the brakes if you don't have any brakes you wouldn't have any kind of wiring going to it over here and just a little closer shot here of the drum underneath so you can see it. There's the drum. You can see here, here's our backing plate. And at the bottom of your backing plate, you almost always have these little knockouts right here, these little plastic pieces that you can pull out, or sometimes they're rubber, so you can adjust your brakes. So now we're going to head over to the other trailer and show you what a, a trailer looks like that doesn't have any brakes. So we're now underneath the smaller black trailer that has the four-way connector. And if we look here, there's no drum assembly, no kind of brakes, there's no wires that's going over here. Uh, so you can see this is what you would kind of see if you had a trailer that didn't have brakes. So you don't need a brake controller for this one. So let's get everything installed here. The first thing we did is we installed a long bracket. This doesn't come with your kit and it's not necessary. This is the bracket that actually holds the seven-way connector that comes in your kit. And you do have the option if you wanted to, you could just run self-tapping screws, you could nut and bolt it wherever you want. Um, but the no-drill bracket here uh, will allow us to mount this without having to make any modifications, put any holes in the vehicle or anything like that. So it just helps you keep your vehicle a little bit cleaner and closer to stock while utilizing all these extra parts. So you can get this here at eTrailer. There, there is also a short version available, but when installing a seven-way, you can see how far this 
wiring sticks out the back here, you're gonna need that clearance of the long bracket in order to, uh, to utilize it with this ETBC7 kit. We're gonna attach our bracket here that comes in the ETBC7 kit to our long bracket. We're using the hardware that came with the long bracket. We're gonna just drop the bolts down through the top of the bracket. Those will line up with the holes here on our seven-way bracket. We'll just slide that up through there and then secure it with the nuts on the other side. And then we'll snug them down with the 10 millimeter socket. I found that if you have a gun, you can just put a little bit of downward pressure and that's enough to get it to tighten down. Um, if you need to, you can use a wrench, I mean, I'm sorry, a uh, screwdriver up here, but that usually does just fine. Now, if you don't use the long bracket and you just want to mount this directly, it does come with two self-tapping screws. Uh, you can attach these using a quarter inch socket and just run that into a metal surface. We can now mount our connector to our bracket. All of our wiring is going to slide through the center hole here. And then we're going to use the hardware that comes with our ETBC7 kit to secure this to the bracket. So take the bolts, they're just a small, they have both a slotted and Phillips. So flathead or Phillips will work with these. Slide that on through, and then you're going to follow that up with a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. And there are three remaining holes. We're going to use the same pieces of hardware in the same order to get the rest of those installed. And then we'll snug these down with a three ace wrench and your choice of bit. We're using Phillips. So now we're going to start getting our wires connected here. The bulk of your wires just feed over your hitch. The four-way connector here, we're actually going to mount right here because with the ETBC7 kit, you get to maintain a four-way connector, which is nice because if you have a, a trailer that you are already using with a four-way and then you got yourself a bigger, newer one that needs that seven-way, you can still hook up to both of them. So that's just going to slide right into that slot there and we can then head back to these wires here. So this is a pretty easy kit to install compared to running a full seven way because it does utilize an existing four pole connector. Your four pole connector has all of your lighting signals. So we can cover the, the wires here. You've got four here. We've got white, which is our ground, brown, which is our tail light circuit, yellow, which is our driver side stop and turn circuit and green, which is the passenger side stop and turn signal. So that's all of our lighting signals. And to get those functioning on our seven way and to also make the four pole work that's next to that seven way connector, we simply just have to plug this in. Before we plug our two four pole ends together, the one from our connector and the one on our vehicle, we're gonna take some dielectric grease and put it on the ends here. That'll just help extend the life of our connection here. And then just slide them together. And then another thing that I like to do to ensure that we don't have any issues here in the future is running a zip tie down through the center of each. And this way they can't come apart. We can ensure we got a good connection. We sealed up the inside with that grease so it's not gonna corrode in there. We will be zip tying and cleaning up all this wiring, uh, but I like to hold off until the end in case we need to ever come back here, move some things around a little bit for, to make things a little bit cleaner. But now we still have four more wires that's coming out of here. Now, one of them is a repeat, and that's this white wire here that has the ring terminal on it. We already have a ground through our four-way, but this is a much bigger, beefier ground that's gonna be necessary for charging a battery, for operating a tongue jack, for your trailer brakes. A lot of that's gonna need a better ground than what just your lighting signals need. So that's why it has an additional one here. The ring terminal being crimped on there lets us know that we're just gonna use a self-tapper to run this right in to get our ground. So they've already crimped it on there for us. So we can grab the uh, self-tapping screw that comes with the kit and we're just gonna run it right into the sheet metal over here. 
You're gonna use the larger self-tapping screw that comes in your kit. This one's gonna take a 10 millimeter socket to run it in. And we wanna to try to not enter inside the vehicle to cause any leaks. So we're gonna stay away from kind of this portion over here where you can see where it would go into the, the trunk pan of the vehicle. We're gonna to stay to this outside ear here so that way our bolt just simply passes straight on through. We'll still get a plenty good ground there and that way we won't uh, potentially introduce any kind of leak inside the vehicle. So we're gonna grab our 10 millimeter socket and then run it in. So this area here, it's gonna be a little difficult to get your gun in there, but you can flex this bumper up, it's plastic. So just flex it up a little. And then we should be able to get that run in. I always double check, see how it's got a little bit of play in it there. We don't want play, so we're gonna probably just move it around a little bit and snug it up some more. And so now we've got it run in, I always grab the end here, make sure that it can't slide back and forth and that we've got a good ground that's fully attached. And if you look at the thickness there, how much thicker it is than the, uh, the one on your four pole. So you can see this is gonna be able to handle significantly more current. So now we have three more remaining wires and this is the, the last three that takes our four way into a seven. So we've got a black wire here. This is the charge line circuit that will be a constant power back here to the seven way to charge like a battery on your trailer or to operate that tongue jack. The blue wire here is the output from a brake controller. So if you do have trailer brakes on your vehicle and you install a trailer brake controller, this is the signal path that would get to your trailer to apply those brakes. And lastly, we have our yellow wire here. This is a reverse light circuit. Uh, it can also be used as a brake lockout for, uh, for you guys that have uh, boat trailers and you wanna use it for that. Now you don't actually get any wire to hook this up in your kit. This is an optional circuit. So you will have to provide your own wire. And the way this installs does vary from vehicle to vehicle. You simply just tap into the uh, reverse light circuit. We have uh, taps that's available here at e-trailer for uh, crimps for squeezing onto them. Um, oftentimes you will either have to feed it inside the vehicle to access the connector there or run it up along the outside, but that wire does not come included in the kit. So just keep that in mind if you need this. Like if you do have a boat trailer and you need that, that particular feature, um, you want to make sure you get some extra wire so you can connect that as well. All right, this is the wire that comes in your kit that we're going to use to connect our charge line circuit and our trailer brake control output circuit. This is a duplex wire that does come sheathed, which is really nice for running the wire because it helps to protect it against any potentially sharp turns. We're gonna make sure we route this in a way that helps to minimize any damage that it takes, but uh, it's nice to have that extra sheathing on there for, for long lasting functionality. The gauge of the wires that's in here is also appropriate for the output. And we're just gonna slice into this here to access our wire. You you can use a razor knife and we're just cutting right down the side there probably cut a little bit more and that's probably all we need there we just need enough cut off uh, to be able to strip our wires and make our connections now you can see on the inside they are white and black which makes it easy for us to be able to identify them because uh, once we connect them back here we've got a long run to the front so if they were the same color it'd be pretty difficult to remember which one was where. We're gonna hook black to black to stay uh, as color coordinated as possible. And we'll use the white with our blue. Now the gauge here, that, that is really important because um, you might be looking at this at home going, oh, I can you know, make my own kit out of wire I got laying around, but you really need to have uh, an appropriate gauge to get all the way back here. And this is a 10 gauge wire, which should be able to handle the amperage that trailer brakes and uh, your charge line circuit could potentially see. So we're just gonna go ahead and strip both of these back. And you may see your connectors there, think that um, it's got ends on there, we're gonna put them right in there, but I actually recommend that you don't use the connectors that comes on your connector there. Uh, these are just regular old butt connectors and there's no kind of 
seal or anything to keep any moisture from getting down in there. This is something that's probably going to have corrosion within, you know, less than a year, especially depending on the area you live. It could be even be less than that, uh, which is going to usually lead to issues with your trailer functioning. Um, and it could, it could even lead to damage for your wiring here. So have, you may have to perform more work than you want to to make it right the next time. So let's just cut these off of here to avoid having to make repairs in the near future. And again, the yellow, we don't get wire in the kit to actually hook that up. Um, we'll discuss it a little bit in detail on how you would find those circuits. But uh, we're gonna leave that guy over there for now. And then we'll strip these both back and we're gonna be using heat shrink butt connectors with these. You can get some at e-trailer here. And I do highly recommend adding those to your cart if you're gonna be installing an ETBC7 kit. And we'll just take our butt connectors now. Here's our heat shrink butt connectors. You can see that the ends on them extend much further out past the actual crimp point here. And you'll see that they will form around our wire here when we apply heat to them. But you wanna make sure you get your connections made before you apply heat. So we're just sliding that over our black wire there. Crimp it in place. And then we're gonna take the black wire here and we're gonna slide it on and crimp it there as well. I like to twist the ends. Just helps the wire slide into the butt connector a little easier. And we'll squeeze that down. We're gonna go ahead and connect the blue one next to our white wire before we bust out the heat gun. And if you see the wire bunch up when you're pushing it in, it just happened there pull it back out and give it a twist again. So we wanna to try to get as many of the strands inside that butt connector as possible so our wire can easily handle any heavier loads. There we go, that looks good. Now we'll grab our heat gun and shrink these down. Here we have our heat gun. You can get this here at e-trailer. So if you don't have one at home, you can purchase one. A lot of guys like to use a lighter on these, which you can do, but you risk potentially damaging the wire um, if you overheat it. This keeps you a little bit safer and also helps prevent any uh, damage occurring. So now we're gonna be routing our wire up to the front of the vehicle. I'm also gonna put a little bit of loom on it here where it runs underneath the trunk pan just to help protect it. You do get some loom in your kit. So you'll be able to do this as well. When routing your wire, you wanna make sure you avoid anything excessively hot like your exhaust and any moving components like our steering and suspension. And we're just trying to protect it because there's a couple of crazy curves right here at the beginning, which is a good candidate for wire loom here. After we put the loom on, we went ahead and went right above our suspension here, making sure to go all the way up above it. So that way we come out on top, that'll stay away from any of those moving parts. We continue to stay above it until we get here to the fuel tank. Then we run along the inside of the fuel tank towards the center of the vehicle. And we just stay at this point for quite a ways. There's a factory wiring here that we can zip tie it to, to make sure it stays in this location. And we continue all the way to the front of the fuel tank. From here then, we head up to where our, this is a, like a shift selector cable for our transmission there. So bring it up and we just zip tight it here to the sheathing because the cable slides on the inside of that. So it's okay to, to go on the outside. I would not zip tie it to any of your lines though. Stay away from brake lines, stay away from fuel lines. We don't want to be zip tied to that because if, if something you know, ever were to happen, some kind of accident, you run over something that flings up and it grabs our wires and it pulls it. We don't want it damaging any of our, uh, our safety components, like our brakes, or we don't want any fuel leaking out or anything like that potentially. So try to stick with, I always like to stick with factory wires. Um, parking brake cables are also good options because they're sheathed like this and the moving components on the inside. Never put it on a part of the parking brake cable that's exposed. Always make sure you're on a sheathed area. That's not going to move. 
From here though, we can just go right up. So I can, you can just bundle the wires up right here and you should be able to reach them from uh, the up top once we come back down. And we're gonna zip tie up our, the excess four pole that we've got here just to the outside of the loom. The loom's not quite thick enough to handle both the circuits uh, plus this as well. So we'll just zip tie it to it to help keep everything nice and clean here. Next, we're gonna mount these circuit breakers that come in our kit. You get three circuit breakers, but we're only gonna utilize two of them. If you look on them here closely, they'll have an amperage rating on them. This one is 30 amps. We're actually not gonna use the 30 amp. And I'll tell you why here in just a second. We've got also a 40 and a 20. This is our 20 and this is our 40. And you can't really tell the difference just by looking at them. You gotta make sure you're reading on the side for its rating. So the 40 is necessary. This one's gonna to hook to our black wire for our charge line circuit. It needs to be the 40 amp to be able to charge our battery, run accessories and things like that. The 20 and the 30 are the options you have for your trailer brake controller. Now, if you're just using a trailer that has one or two axles, you can probably get away with the 20 amp and that would probably be just fine. Um, Cause we're not gonna ever draw more, you know, more than that from this. But if you're gonna, if you are planning on pulling a trailer that has more like three or four axles, um, even a two axle, I would still probably put the 30 on there just to make sure I had enough headroom. But with our RAV4 here, we're not gonna be pulling anything that big. So the 20 is fine. And that way it'll limit the output of that controller. So it can't ever exceed what the controller is rated for because they don't need a big controller uh, just cause this vehicle is not gonna pull anything big. So we're gonna install these on about this location here. We can put one on each side of this little bracket here. Um, there's nothing on the other side that we're going to run into that's going to cause any damage. I'm going to put the 40 closer to the center and the 20 here because we do have some more wires that need to route towards the inside for a brake controller uh, off the smaller one, off the 20 amp. So I'm just going to take my circuit breaker here, get it in roughly the location where I want to install it. That looks like that's going to fit well there. And then we're going to use a quarter inch socket to run these in place. And we're gonna do the same thing here with our other one. And this one's a little bit harder to uh, hold everything in there. So when it's like that, I made just a little scratch mark with the screw there in the location that this is roughly going to sit. That way we can go ahead and start that hole and then we'll pull this back out. Just a little bit easier to work with when it's such a tight area, I'm trying to hold a bunch of pieces together. Because now we can slide this through and it'll easily start in this hole for us, making this a whole lot easier to install. And then we can kind of angle it just as necessary to get around that cable so there's no strain on it. And then run the other one in. And you may or may not need an extension. Looks like we may need an extension here for this one. Let's just see. Oh, looks like we were able to get that one in there as well. So now we've got both these connections made. We've got our wire here. We're going to have to take all the way back here from where we just attached it when we pulled it up. Kind of just pulled all this wire up from down below. And after I pulled it up, I zip tied it so that way it couldn't fall back down. We're gonna have to remove the sheathing all the way down from the rest of this because we need to separate those two wires as they're gonna be going to different locations from here. So now we've got the sheathing cut off. We separated the two, the white, we're just gonna hang out right over there for now. We'll come back to that later. The black wire, we're gonna head off towards the front here. And we're gonna have it kind of run down this way. We can make a nice turn here with this. This is the hood release cable here, but it's also inside of a sheathing. So that's, that'll work out fine for us to secure to there. And now we're just gonna bring our black wire right over here to the 40 amp breaker. Once we've got it over there, we can cut off our excess. I like to leave just a little bit of excess there for the future. 
We'll strip this back. And on this wire, we're gonna be placing one of the small ring terminals that comes in our kit. Okay. Route it as appropriately as you can. And this one here is the output from the circuit breaker. This, because this is going back to our connector to power things on our trailer. So the output from the breaker is gonna be the silver post. The bronze post is the source. That's gonna be our battery here. We'll go ahead and then attach that down. I'm gonna leave it loose just for now because um, we're gonna have to come back to this other stud. We're gonna be using some of the black wire that we've got left over to run it from here to here. But I like to wait until pretty much the last step to run my two power leads over because we're gonna be working with this wire still and uh, we don't wanna accidentally cause any shorts while we're working or anything like that. So by not hooking these up to power, the wire we're working with is never gonna be live. But we are gonna be using some of this black wire. This is gonna go from the other breaker to the inside of the vehicle to be able to power our brake controller. So we're gonna strip back this side here, or either side of your excess black that you've got here, it doesn't matter which side. Strip it back, place a small ring terminal on it. And since this is gonna power our brake controller, we know that this needs to hook up to the other circuit breaker. So we're gonna just kind of take this, a similar path and hook it up to this other breaker. This is also going to hook to the silver post because this is the output from this breaker to go to our brake controller to power it. Just slide that on and again once again we're just going to leave this about hand tight because we're going to wait to hook up that stud as well until a later step. So we're going to wrap the black wire now back towards our white wire. And now we'll need to get this routed inside the vehicle for connection to a brake controller. I'm going to zip tie up the area here just to keep things nice and clean as I go. So now we need to get these wires routed inside to make the connection to the brake controller. And what we have here is the white wire that we've run from our seven way at the back that we routed up that's going inside. And then this is the black wire that we have hooked to the 20 amp breaker. Now to get this inside, it's actually not the easiest thing to do because the grommet that passes our wires through you can kind of see this is the, the harness here where it goes down. And unfortunately that grommet is located directly behind the uh, pillar here, this portion where our strut components are located. So it's pretty difficult to access. You can access it though. And the way I was able to do it was from the inside. I, you can easily see the grommet on the inside and then we can pass something through the grommet and then reach around the back here and grab it and pull it through. We're using airline tubing. Um, if you have some of this at home, this works great. It's just quarter inch airline tubing. Um, but I know a lot of people that don't have this at home. But what you probably do have at home is a metal coat hanger and you can unfold that coat hanger out, push it through the grommet and grab it on this side and we can attach our wires to it. So I'm just gonna take my wires now and I'm gonna tape it to this end of my pole wire here. So I'm just holding the wires on there like that. And you may even consider doing a stagger. I know my white wire is longer than my black wire. So we'll stagger that one. And that kind of gives you like a, almost like a taper to, to our component here as we go to feed it through. It should feed through a little bit easier that way. And we're just using electrical tape now to just run around these, trying to hold them in a shape that I feel would pass through the grommet as easily as possible. Because these are some pretty thick wires. Um, what I did to get this airline hose through, I just took a Phillips screwdriver and I poked the grommet first to get a little hole started and then the airline tube was able to pass through from there. But once we add all these wires to it, we are drastically increasing the thickness. I'm heading back down this way, make sure I pull it tight. Um, because when you go to pass it through, if it catches your wire here, 
it's going to end up pulling one of your wires off of your fish wire and then you might end up with only one wire passing through. And also a little trick to get this uh, girthiness through the hole, we're going to put a little bit of silicone on here. That'll lube it up a little bit and make it pass through easier. Try not to go too crazy with it. So we're going to pull this. If you have an assistant as well, it is not a bad idea to have them give you a little bit of a push as you're pulling from the other side. I'm going to start pulling this. Our grommet's located here. And where this is at, this is directly behind the data link connector that's located here. This is uh, where like a technician would plug in to read codes on your vehicle. If you've ever been to AutoZone with a code, you've probably been familiar with somebody plugging into this, this guy before. But it's pretty much straight back from that. You will have to go slightly towards the outside and slightly up some to access the grommet, but it's like right here. So we're gonna grab our pull wire now and just keep on pulling it until we get our wires to pass through here. So we're gonna full finish pulling the rest of these inside. As you're pulling these in, um, what often happens is on the outside under the engine, you see how these are kind of just um, kind of winding up into little loops and stuff like that. It's not uncommon for uh, one of those loops to catch something under the hood and you, you didn't actually pull all the wire in. So just double check, like right here, I know I got more white wire than that, but I can't pull it. And we don't want to force it because we're probably looped around some component under the engine, uh, in the engine compartment. So yeah, our wire was just kind of bundled up here. So we're just trying to free it. It's not uncommon to have to do this maybe one or two times because you can see there's little studs and stuff like this just are just so good at grabbing that wire when you're trying to pull it through. So now we've got the wires pulled in. I'm going to pull them just kind of down to about here. This seems acceptable to be able to reach to a brake controller. And most of your brake controllers are going to come with their own kind of harness that plugs it in. So you're going to get a little bit more lead length as well. Uh, so this seems acceptable about here. And we're going to trim off the excess now. So now that we've got these trimmed, our customer didn't purchase a brake controller. So he's going to likely be adding one in the future once he determines what is most appropriate for him and his trailer. Uh, but we are getting this all set up for him. So I'm going to label these so that way when he does get one, if he installs it himself at home, he'll know what their functions are. And we know that our black one here, this is our power for the brake controller. So we're going to just write on it. We'll write B positive, brake controller, B positive. So that way they know what this is for. There we go, B positive on there. So he knows that that's hot. This, con this here is the brake controller output. So we're going to make sure we label that for him as well. All right, and we labeled it brake controller output. So he knows this is the circuit that's gonna go from the brake controller back to a seven way to activate the brakes. Got both of those labeled. Your brake controller has four wires that it needs in order to function properly though. We need battery positive. We need ground, which we're gonna get ready to add here. You need your output for the brake controller to the back, but we also need a signal from the brake pedal, from the sensor on here, from the brake switch, stoplight switch to tell the brake controller that, hey, you are pressing the brakes uh, because it needs that input plus the internal inertia sensor to appropriately apply the output for your trailer. So we're gonna do ground first. There's a nice uh, metal plate right here with some bolts on it. We should be able to use one of those bolts to get our ground. So we're gonna use our 12 millimeter socket here to remove the bolt that's located down here. Right here. You can see that that will slide over the ring terminal that comes in our kit here. So we're going to use, use this to get our ground. So we're going to grab some of the white wire. And this is just some of the, ex the excess white wire that we trimmed off of here. We're going to use this for ground. So we're going to strip back some of this wire. There we go. Slide on our ring terminal and then crimp it down. There we go. So we'll just then just take our 
bolt that we had removed. Gone ahead and slid our ring terminal on. We'll then line our bolt back up and just reinstall it here. There we go, solid ground. So we're then just gonna kinda bring this over to match it up with the other ones so we can get a good trim length for it. That seems pretty acceptable about here. So we're gonna just cut the end off and we're gonna label this one for him so that way he knows this is his ground. There we go, we have it labeled ground for them. So we can go ahead and drop that off there. And now we have our last connection here on the inside, which would be on the stop, to get our stoplight signal. You do not want to use your remaining wire here. This wire is too thick. The stoplights uh, circuits on your vehicle are going to be made with a very small gauge wire, uh, probably like a 20 gauge, uh, maybe 22, uh, somewhere around there. And this wire here being so thick, the weight of the wire itself and the rigidness of it will likely damage the other wire over time it being connected to such a small wire. So you will want to source your own wire for that. Um, most of the time, the harness that comes with your brake controller you have a red wire coming off of it, and that red wire is for perking to your stoplight switch. That's usually long enough to go from your brake controller around to the stoplight switch. So you don't normally need to use any of this wire, just the one, just what comes with your brake controller. Um, so just keep that in mind. So here's the stoplight switch on your RAV4. Uh, it's actually this right here by my thumb. But if you follow the wire back from the switch, it goes to this connector that's located here, and we can actually already access the four wires coming off of the switch there. The blue wire is the one we want. Uh, we put a quick splice on it. Um, I went ahead and put it on there just because you, you really can't get tools and stuff in here and see what's going on all at the same time. Um, this is a different quick splice than comes in your kit. This is a red colored one, which I would recommend purchasing here from eTrailer. The blue ones that come in your kit are for thicker gauge wires, and this is an extremely small gauge wire here, so you'll want to swap to the red ones to make sure you get good contact. And then added some red wire. This doesn't also not come in your kit. Again, usually your brake controller is going to have long enough wire, uh, but this guy doesn't have one yet, so that way we could run this down. Just followed the factory wiring, zip tying it around, and then bringing it back over to the rest of our wires here. So now that we've got all these labeled, I'm going to take anything that's potentially hot, and I'm going to cover up the end, because we are not certain when our customer is going to add that brake controller, so we don't want these to be sitting here live in the meantime because uh, they are going to be live. So we want to just put some tape over the end there. And then just wrap that up. Might put a little bit more tape on it just to protect it. They're not stripped or anything, so it's low likelihood of any shorts occurring, but we always want to try to be as safe as we can. We're going to do the same thing with the red wire here because that's our stoplight switch output and that is going to send out signals from our stoplight switch whenever the brake pedal's pressed. So we're going to cover that one as well because we especially don't want this one uh, to short. Um, the other ones, right now, they're not hooked to anything. They're just kind of there ready for a brake controller, but this one is necessary for the brake light and cruise control function of the vehicle and stuff. So if this were to short, uh, more often than not, you'll lose your brake lights. Cruise control is not going to work until you fix the fuse and the shorting issue. So we've got those taped up. We don't need to worry about the brake controller output because we don't have a brake controller, so it's not going to be hot. Ground's never hot. So that looks all good from there. At this point, we're going to just take some, we're going to use some yellow tape just to make it highly visible for the customer to know where we um, put all the wires for them. And then we're just gonna secure and hide this under the dash. But if you had a brake controller, at this point you would just wire up your brake controller. And again, they're all basically the same. They all come with, uh, almost all of them come with a harness that has four wires. The typical colors that you get on your brake controller is gonna be black for positive. It's gonna be blue for the brake controller output, white for ground, and then typically red 
for the stop lamp switch. So you would just crimp those together. You could use regular butt connectors to do so since we're inside the vehicle. No need to use those uh, heat shrink ones um, inside of here. So we've got all of our connections made here on the inside. Um, I did remove this under panel right here to make it easier for you guys to see at home. You can access that uh, connector there at the back without pulling this out, but I would probably pull it out anyway if I was doing this at home just because it's a little bit easier to work around. There were just three screws uh, in the front, across the front here that held it in place. And then you can see it's got these two tabs here that I just pushed in and pulled down and then this slides out to remove it. So I'm gonna get this reinstalled and then we'll meet under the hood to get that final battery positive connection made. So we're back here underneath the hood. We've got some black wire left from uh, what we had routed. We now need to go from the bronze studs here to the battery positive right up there. So we can go ahead and strip this back. And then we're gonna add a small ring terminal to one side. So just slide your ring terminal on. We're gonna crimp it down. Remove the nut on the bronze post. Slide your wire on. Reinstall your nut. And we're gonna pull out our wire to roughly the length that we'll need for our connection, which that looks pretty good there with just a little bit of access if necessary for the future. I'm gonna go ahead and just set this one down for a minute. We'll come back to that. And we're gonna strip this one back now and put a small ring terminal on it as well and connect it to the other bronze stud on the other circuit breaker that we mounted here. Slide our wire on. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down because currently we're not live. If you hook these up over here, when you go to tighten these down, uh, they're live and you could potentially short something. So we're using our 3-8 socket now to just snug these up. So then we're just holding this wire, uh, just kind of running it down the side, just like we did with the other one to reach our battery here. We've got them both matched. So now we're gonna strip each end of this one back. And then these are gonna get the larger of the ring terminals that come in your kit so we can get those connected to our battery. All right, so now we'll take these guys Bring them over to our battery here. We're gonna remove the positive nut here on top. We'll use a 12 millimeter socket to do so. Slide our new components right on top. And then we'll secure We'll re-secure our nut and that'll get those installed there. We can just kind of bend these down, run them right down the side here. And our battery cover's not gonna be able to go back on. We've just got too much, too many components here between the four pole uh, that it had previously installed and our new components. It's okay though, that can just hang out right there. And now we're gonna go ahead and plug in our tester here just to make sure that everything that we've installed here is gonna function the way it needs to. Now we don't have a brake controller installed, so we're not gonna get any brake controller output. But if we look at the gauge there at the top, we can see that our 12 volt uh, is connected, our charge line circuit, it's moved our gauge up. Also wanna verify all of our lighting signals, which we've got our left turn, right turn, tail lamps, and brake lamps, make sure all those signals are still functioning passing through to your seven way. And then once you get a controller installed, you should get output on your brake controller there. And that completes our look at kit ETBC7 on our 2011 Toyota RAV4.